I'm John Bond. Welcome to Move Yourself Happy. Made for fitness enthusiasts who want to make their passion their profession. Are you unhappy in your present job? Are you passionate about health and fitness? Do you want to release your true potential? If the answer is yes, this podcast is for you. I will be teaching you the specific knowledge that every trainer and coach needs to be successful. So listen closely as I share my expertise with you. So just like me, you can love what you do. Welcome back. In today's episode, I've got George Horlock with me again today. George Horlock from George Horlock Coaching. And uh, we had George on previously, a little while back, and got loads of great feedback about that episode. People really enjoyed it, and uh, what a great guest. So he's back on today, and he's also a mate of mine, so it made it quite easy to arrange this. Always a pleasure, George, to have you on. Thank you, mate. Thanks for inviting me back, and I'm thrilled that everybody enjoyed the last episode. Like you say, we've got some lovely positive comments about it. We've got a couple of people messaged me as well, and even in person. Um, we got some people coming up to us, didn't we, that we know and work with, and yeah. that was nice. Yeah, really nice. Um, so, yeah, very, very excited to be back. How is everything with you and your life? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to interview me now? <laughs> I'm, I'm re- reversing the role now, mate. I'm the interviewer. <laughs> uh, everything's, everything's good. Everything's good. I was going to do the British response and go, yeah, very well, thank you, and you. Um, mm. But actually, um, everything's good, although it is Christmas, which means that the kids are now off. Yep. So there's a bit of like daddy daycare going on slash still trying to operate a business slash remembering have I bought everything I'm supposed to buy? Have I remembered it? Like there's lots of stuff going on in my head at the moment. So I don't know if you're going to see the best me today. Yeah, well, that's okay. I think most people are probably going through that right now. Um, Preoccupied. But we were speaking about this, weren't we? We were talking about kind of having to juggle so many things that you're a business owner, but you're also a trainer and a father, and a husband, and it's quite hard to juggle all of that, I can imagine, because I'm not in those shoes yet. Uh, you're not in my, my shoes as far as being a parent goes, aren't you? But being you're... a parent and a husband. Oh, and a husband. But yeah. you, you I've, are a partner. I've, I've got a partner, exactly. Similar, but, similar experiences from yeah. that point of view, I expect. But um, yeah, it is actually, it is very tricky. Um, <laughs> sound like I'm like, <laughs> give me sympathy, everybody. It's very, very yeah. tricky juggling all this stuff. But no, I think it's important to discuss, because... When people look from the outside in, they see everybody on social media, don't they, going, you know, you too can have this and this life is great. If only you just sign up here and if you do this and yeah. that and, you know, you can live the dream. And yeah. and a lot of the time it is brilliant, but it is going to, ev- everything has cons to it. There's pros, there's cons, and it's never plain sailing the whole time. There are going to be times where things mount up and you don't feel like you're on top of stuff and there is going to be times where you get self-doubt and you know things end your head and, and you're like oh I don't know I don't know if I can turn up as my best self today mm. um so and you have to manage that so no there's lots of stuff so it's a good it's a good thing to talk about I mean look I want to chat to you and I want to know more about you but let's 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 talk about that as the first subject then um managing multiple roles in your life so how do you do that because I know like you said you're not a parent and you're not a husband but you are a partner and yeah. you are a son and you are a, a brother yeah and you're a friend and everything else yeah yeah true so how do you juggle that I've always been one of those people who tends to go with the flow I tend to follow my gut quite a lot I'm one of those people where I'm not very calculated I don't write a lot of stuff down I don't make plans and put them in the diary too much. I like to go the flow a little bit. So every day, obviously, I jump out of bed ready to be with my partner and do things with her. That's like my number one sort of priority. Um, And once that's been managed, it's then like, right, let's check check in on my clients and uh, train myself, get my nutrition right, do all of this, and then I can practice some of my hobbies and my interests and do a bit of work here and there. I tend to go with the flow and just see how I'm feeling on the day. Appreciate not everyone has that luxury, if you want to call it that, but that is just how I roll. And whether or not that's the right way to do it is arguable. But is that a word? Arguable? Arguable. 
Uh, yeah, that, I think that it's a word. That came word. out like a bit of word vomit there. No, 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 that's a word, isn't it? Arguable. Argu- yeah, that is argu- 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 arguable. 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 Yeah, is a word, arguable yeah. is a word. Let's go with that. Um, yeah, I mean, we're arguing about whether it's a word. Yeah, arguable. Ar- <laughs> Can you imagine if you said no? It's arguable be- that arguable is even a word. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, all right. <laughs> all right. There we go. They've learned something already. Um, yeah, I mean, look, I think the minute you try to manage your life in it, a calculated way where it's all numbers and charts and diaries and stuff. I, I don't know about you, but people who have a diary and they carry it around with them, they always seem stressed when they're writing in it. And it's always put me off. I remember even as a kid when I'd see adults, I'm going to stick that in the diary. And I, don't, don't get me wrong, I do use the one on my phone. But um, it just seems like they've almost got too much going on. Whereas mm. if you kind of just relax a little bit more and it's fine if this doesn't happen or if we have to postpone that to a later date I tend to do that a bit and it even works with my clients like you know like if when I was training people in the park it it wasn't regimented in the sense of we're going to do it on this time on this date every single Monday it was more like oh when are you free next or oh should we do this again you know tomorrow or I know I'm meant to be seeing you on Wednesday but is there any chance you can do a bit earlier and it was a lot less stressful for both parties than that Oh, well, I can see why though, from because that's very different to to me actually. Although we're yeah. very similar in a lot of ways, that is different to me. Um, but I can see why online coaching probably suited you because yeah, you you barely need a diary for that, do you? It's yeah. about it's it's a lot it's a lot more reacting actually. I think isn't it with online coaching because you're reacting to people people's messages. Um, when they do a program, rather than going at this time, I have this client. I'm delivering this session, so I can see why that has an appeal to you. So I guess if anyone else is listening, thinking, "Oh, I like that approach that George has of just you know being like, you know, don't need a diary. You know, when are we training next? It's yeah. just you know, online coaching is probably a good step forward for them as well, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, because you've just got to check in with everyone once a day, but it's not like once a day at eleven o'clock or once a day at three p.m. It's just once a day, whenever it's convenient for yourself. Mm. And I think that is why a lot of people are drawn to online coaching because it, and I, I can say it now, it is easier and less stressful than in-person PT. But you do definitely miss the whole interaction. Like one of my guys is doing really well at the moment and he's constantly sending me like progress pictures and videos of him in the gym lifting really heavy weights and just, just doing so well. I, I can't high five him, you know. I can't shake his hand. I can't give him a, you know, a bro hug and be like, "Yes, mate, you're doing so well." Mm. And be there with him and spot him, and you know, there's been none of that. And y- y- you do feel a little bit like, um, yeah, just distant from them. In a that's sense. that's man. That's again. That's about the pros and cons again, isn't it? Yeah. So, because I know that people that want to pursue any career, whether it's becoming, you know, turning their passion as a fitness enthusiast into a fitness professional or you know going off and becoming an actor or whatever it is they there's 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 aspects of that job that are going to resonate with them that they're going to enjoy doing the most and there's going to be some aspects that they don't particularly like so you do have to take the rough with the smooth so I guess that's for you the online coaching taking the rough with the smooth is you miss that human contact yeah definitely I think that's something that people really need to think about hard before they go into that world because you can kid yourself all you like that no I'll be fine I've got my friends and my family around me I don't need to actually be physically um, there with my client um, or my clients but you do you do you do miss it a lot you know mm. just just being there with someone and getting feedback you know in the moment is so much nicer than you know, oh, earlier I had a workout and I did this and it was great. It's like, oh, I wish I was there with you, you know? Yeah, you'd, you, you could be there to experience it with them as well. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, do you know what that makes me think is like, as we're listening to it, as, as people are listening to this, because I always think when someone's listening, what are they learning from what we're saying other yeah. than us just having a chat, <laughs> which yeah. is nice. But um, it's working out what are your checkbox, what are your tick boxes? So when you're going after a career, what do you need that career to do for you? And it might be that um, there's aspects that, yeah, are an ideal, but actually, if it means you get these other boxes ticked, mm. then you're quite happy to, to to put up with that. 
Yeah. Like, I don't know, like, for you, let's say you're, you're doing your online coaching because it's a way for you to work with more people that are very, very specific to your target market. Yeah. So you get to work with people you really like chatting to and can relate to. And it gives you that ability to have complete autonomy, like work when you want, you know, react to people rather than having to have this rigid timetable. But those other aspects that you don't like about it, where sometimes you miss a bit of face-to-face contact, it's like, well, but it it gives me so much that yeah. I'm willing to accept that. Yeah. And I think that's like, that's life, isn't it? It is. Like, I, 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 I do, I'm going to sound like a grumpy old fart now, but like social media is terrible for just showcasing all the brilliant benefits of a particular career or, or anything that you're likely to go purchase, so, isn't it? 100%, no, like, yeah. Same as us, tra- as trainers, we showcase our clients that get great results. We don't showcase the ones that don't. <laughs> 100%. We don't 100%. go, this is Dave. Dave yeah. didn't follow the program and he still looks like a bag of crap. You yeah, know yeah, exactly. And we've said this before, haven't we, with like people chasing certain dreams and goals and aspirations and we're constantly showing that, you know, if you just keep pushing but you're going to make it. And don't get me wrong, I think everyone should keep going. But we've said before, the people who get to the top, there's tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands who are trying to do the same thing and never got there. So life is, unfortunately, especially social media, is filled with success stories. But there's so many people trying to get to the same level yeah, but aren't, aren't there. Yeah, there's definitely a lot of shared characteristics of those that are su- successful. So although it's not an exact science, it's it's not bad, I think. I think you, like, I remember, remember Gary Lineker saying that people always used to say to him that he was always in the right place at the right time because yeah. he would, like, he'd, he'd head the ball in the back of the net and he'd be like, oh, it's Gary Lineker. He's yeah. just, you know. um, but actually what people didn't realize is the number of unsuccessful sprints that he'd made into that box yeah he'd sprinted into that box god knows how many times during a football game and the one time someone does cross it in and he happens to be on the end of that ball he pops in the net and everyone goes oh there he is always in the right place at the right time but i think when it comes to striving towards your goal or what you want to achieve there's so much more failure yeah that has happened occurred oh so true to get to the point and the same same with um training to get to grow muscle mass to get lean like how many times does a client fail at losing weight before they finally lose weight yeah and it goes back to my favorite quote which is until you're sick and tired of being sick and tired will you make change and so many people try and try and try but it's because they're not sick and tired of their body yet you know they just they kind of want it they talk about people in life being like a a, a kinder person like mm. oh, I kind of want to make money I kind of want to get a six pack I kind of want to lose some fat no it's not until you definitely 100% want it so much that you go after it mm. if you just kind of want something you'll probably never do it and you do get that a lot in the fitness world with trainers and clients alike that's true yeah because you are going to come across challenges and you are going to have to overcome adversity so if you don't want it that much you're going to be left with this well I don't think it's really worth it actually it's yeah. not worth this struggle so you have got to really want it but I think you also have to be mindful that there's going to be struggle so don't be surprised when it comes along and I also think don't beat yourself up if you realise that something's not actually for you like I've had this before where I've been training people and they just don't want it very much they just don't they, they don't want to work hard they're not really interested they cancel quite a lot and I've sat people down before and had a really pleasant open conversation about it i've said look maybe like intense physical fitness sessions three times a week it's just not your thing now don't get me wrong everyone needs to be exercising and we can remove that word we can call it moving if you want everyone needs to be moving throughout Mm. their week otherwise you will get sick and it it becomes a moral dilemma if you say to people you know i'll just sit back and eat cake all day and you'll you'll be fine live your life Mm. we need to be instilling in people that from a very early age we need to be moving yeah to be walking exercising calisthenics whatever it is we need to be doing some sort of exercise agreed yeah but you know if running on a treadmill for 30 minutes every other day isn't your thing 
don't do it. <laughs> yeah. You know, find what you enjoy. If you prefer to play badminton or tennis like you did back in the day or, you know, maybe playing a sport is your thing or maybe going out on the bike with your friends or a little early morning jog to the seafront with your mate. Maybe you prefer doing that. That's fine. You've got to find out what you, how you enjoy moving. But, but beasting yourself in the gym and trying to get this unreal, crazy body, like that might just not be your mindset because I've said this before, people who have the best bodies tend to be a little bit crazy in a good way, in a good way, but just like they're on it all the time. They don't switch off. They're so obsessed with training that the result is an amazing body. You know, you never meet someone who's really good at something and they just half heart it. Mm. You know, oh, I just did this a little bit or I do it when I feel like it. It's, it's their life. So if you don't want fitness to take over and actually become your life, you know, you're probably not going to get the best results in the world. doesn't mean you can't get good results. But all I'm saying is I think everyone listening, they might be a fitness enthusiast or a fitness professional regardless. You know, if it's one of these things where you're not obsessed with it and you're not doing it all the time, like that's not a bad thing. No? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Dan John, I think I mentioned him before in podcast, but he, I remember he used to say to people all the time like that, what's your goal? And they'd be like, I want to wanna be able to run a sub 10 second 100 metres. Great. Why? Well, because that's like world class, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, but why? why is, so why is that important to you to be world class? Well, you know, because that's, that would show everyone that I'm a great athlete. Yeah, but why do you want to show everyone? Like, well, just, exactly, yeah. Because basically, when you strip a goal down, you get to the root of it. Yeah. Sometimes, it, you realise, actually, that's not the right... You're, you're after something else. Yeah, 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 completely. <laughs> that, that, that kind of sub-10 second 100 metres is actually something... And I'm not saying that it, 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 might not be the, it might still be the right goal. And that's what you'd find with people. Sometimes, actually, it, well, then, yeah, that is still the right goal for you. But mm. it might be from stripping it right back well actually you're chasing the wrong thing there oh mate yeah a lot of people are trying to chase happiness I believe as well with fitness because mm. I think that it's so instilled in us isn't it that like if you are attractive if you are good looking if you have a good body you're going to be happy because you're going to get attention and people are going to look at you and whatever mm. and I think so many I'd actually say like the vast majority of people in the gym these days, especially when you, it gets a little bit to the younger crowd, they're doing it for looks and looks only. Now, of course, I think most of us are doing it a bit for looks as well. Mm. But I know me and you are so into our health. Whenever we talk about fitness, I don't even think me and you have had like one conversation where we've spoken about, oh, like, let's train this so that we look so that we become better looking or something. We've never spoken about that, have we? It's always come back down to health and longevity and the blue zones, which we can talk about another time. Um, but I, I do worry how many people are insecure and or haven't been loved enough as a child and or have been told that they're not attractive or whatever. And as a result, that's why they feel like the gym needs to be their second home as such. Yeah. Oh, there were, God, there were two things in my mind you were talking then. One, I was like, oh, I probably need to correct you a little bit because I do think, I still think about aesthetic stuff. Yeah. Um, so like I, you know, when I did the, when I turned 40 and that photo shoot. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that would be like one of the occasions in my life where I probably looked my best. Yeah. And there's like a handful of occasions where, you know, one was like when I uh, was getting ready to go on holiday with a, a I think it was Samantha actually it was like the first holiday we had together where I was conscious about looking great on that holiday yeah, so yeah, yeah. I was motivated for that I had a you know a lot unlicensed boxing bout once where I oh, yeah. was very conscious that I was going to be um, taking my shirt off in front of lots of people yeah and um, so there was that going on um but yeah that during that time um that's that was definitely an aesthetic I wanted to look good and I still use those photos in my advertising because I know that my industry is a very kind of fickle and can qu quite quite often be quite shallow industry yeah, where massively. what does this guy know? Um, he doesn't look like a fitness model. Yeah. He doesn't look like an athlete, which I know is ridiculous, but unfortunately that's what a lot of people think. So I will still use some of those photos. And I want, like now, you know, based on health metrics, like having my bloods done, you know, my waist circumference, I am healthy. Yeah. I still want to look better. Oh, definitely. Oh, definitely, yeah. I mean, we've had these conversations as well where, like, don't get me wrong, that is a huge part of it. It's, it's you know, everyone knows when you exercise and eat healthy, you end up looking better. 
Mm. No, you do. You just look better. Um, so, yeah, that's definitely going to be a big motivation for most people and myself. You know, I want to look good. I want to take my shirt off and, you know, I don't want to look unhealthy or feel unhealthy. And, with you know, you've got Samantha, I've got Grace, and we want to look good for them as well. And if everyone wants that. Um, but I, the part that I worry about is when that's the only reason. Mm. And I think there's a lot of people out there where that is the only reason and they don't know it mm. and they're kind of kidding themselves that oh, I'm doing this to be healthy and I did no, 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 you you just want to look good and only look good. Whether or not that's a problem, I don't know. I'd like your opinion on that. If, if someone was purely doing it to look good and look better, I'm not saying it is a problem, but what I'm saying is it can become a problem because you know, it's it's like it's like anything in life. If you're only doing it to look a certain way, is is there something else that's deeper inside that needs to be addressed? I think there's extremes in every situation, isn't there? So, like, there obviously it, the the extreme is it can lead to body dysmorphia, right, right. it can lead to eating disorders, etc. But then there will be occasions, and lots of them, and possibly even the majority, where it's not. It hasn't got to that extreme. Yeah. And actually, the fact that somebody just wants to l- like what they see reflecting back at them in the mirror, or feel good in those holiday photos, or fit into those those trousers or that top better, gets them off the couch mm. and gets them moving, and stops the gets them saying no at work when someone offers a bit a biscuit yeah. and a piece of cake and maybe without that motivation, yeah, their health would be worse for it. They would have higher risk of heart disease, type 2 diabetes, dementia, yeah. probably depression, anxiety, you know, like um, everything that comes with being unhealthy. So my, I suppose I was going to say the short answer, which obviously it's too late for that. <laughs> <laughs> so I've gone off on one. But the short answer is I actually think it's okay to chase aesthetics um, mm. as long as you... Re- you try to remain relatively grounded with it. Yeah. And and just conscious that it can get out of control if you're not careful. Yeah, because I, I, I used to think of it as almost like trying to pursue acting just to become famous and not because you like acting. That's a really good example. Definitely, really good example. And it, yeah, I mean, that'd be like pursuing being a... a f- yeah, that's a really good example, George, because imagine like pursuing to be a famous fitness professional. Yeah. You wanted to be like a, an influencer from the fitness aspect where yeah. everyone knows who you are, um, you know, people are recognised, every gym in the country, someone's going to recognise you. Yeah. Just for that. Yeah, for the fame. Rather than because you actually love training and exercise yeah. and you want to spread that word to as many different people as possible. Yeah. You want to help as many different as possible. It's two different two different motivations there. I think probably the the first one would lead to more issues with your own sanity, mm. mental health, etc. Um, whereas the second one is, I would have thought was going to be much more per- purposeful. Yeah, and it wouldn't matter about the un- outcome because if you didn't make it, it right. wouldn't matter because right. you've helped so many people on the way and you've become exactly. probably a person, a better person for it. I don't know exactly, and that's why I was saying earlier about the whole like, you know, if it's not your thing, don't worry. Like you don't need to beat yourself up for it not being your thing. Like why, why am I not enjoying exercising five times a week? Well. I, me, George Horlock, don't enjoy exercising intensely five times a week. Yeah, not intensely. I'd much rather train, you know, intensely two or three times a week and then fill in the other gaps with walks and, Mm. you know, going out and exploring and building a fire in the woods and having fun, you know, and and a a river swim in the summer, you know, having fun with it rather than, you know, just being based in the gym. But then there are people out there who train five times a week and they genuinely love it. You know, and for those people, I say keep going. You know, make, just make sure you're you're living this life as happy as you can live it. Yeah, that's good advice, I think, because you've got so many options out there, things you can do, haven't you? Like mm. I'm very much. I mean, since all that research I did for my masters, <laughs> I always feel like, sound like a knob when I was doing my masters. That's good. I don't think you talk about it um, enough because that's okay. a very impressive thing to have achieved. <laughs> Um, but it it reinforced because obviously my head was buried in research papers and books and yeah. just talking about the links between exercise and mental health so much yeah. that now I, I it's just like 
it's so clear to me that often when I'm thinking about going and training now, I'm almost, I'm rarely thinking about long-term goals now. Mm. I'm thinking about just making that day better. Yeah, that's a good one. Like, you know, just like... That's so true. Like Saturday mornings, I go always go for a 10K run early on a Saturday morning. And this Saturday, just gone, it was, you know, I get up really early because of other things, commitments with the kids and everything else. So I go, really, and it's dark, it's cold. What time do you go? Uh, well, it's, I go about 6.30. Okay. So it's, it's dark and cold on yeah. Saturday morning. And um, I number of times I, I'm like, I don't, I don't want to do it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I don't want to yeah. get out there in the cold and dark. I'm in a nice warm bed. Yeah. Um, I, you know, I've, I've got, I can go downstairs and grab myself another coffee. That sounds nice. You know? Yeah, yeah. Have a chat with Samantha rather than go out into the dark cold. But... I always say to myself, my Saturday is going to be better yeah. if I do. So I force myself up and out I go. And every time, without fail, I have a better Saturday for it. And there has been days where I've not done that. Mm. And I'm a, I, I'm a pain in the ass. Like yeah. Samantha would be like, honey, do you need to go for a run or something? Yeah. <laughs> Which is like her way of going, yeah. you're annoying me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you go for a run, yeah. please? <laughs> be like, it's basically like taking... Take grabbing your hamster and just sticking on a wheel, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, I notice it even like um, when I pick Grace up, you know, uh, after a long day's work in for both of us and she's got a very stressful job, brilliant job, she's an artist, but um, very stressful at times and I'll pick her up sometimes and we'll both be a bit grumpy or we'll just sort of, you know, not talking to each other as much as we normally do. We'll drive to the gym and we'll be like, oh, and we'll sit in the car and we'll do the whole like, oh, I can't be bothered. And then we do it we sit back in the car and we're chatting on the way home and we're all vibrant and it's completely changed our mood because our dopamine levels are right up there mm. and they're slowly coming back down. Um, so you're right, mate. I, I push it's, it's like, there's so many, I mean, there's so many examples, but even like sometimes going for a, a walk, like up like Chanctonbury room near us, it's quite a walk. It's uphill, you know, during the walk, you're a bit like, Oh, why did I come out here today? You know, I could be at home. Like it's so cold. It's so blowy out here. The minute you're done, you feel fantastic, don't you? Yeah, always. Yeah, if there's been a bit of struggle or a bit of adversity, you've got to overcome. A bit, basically, a bit of pain. Put a bit of pain, mate, yeah. bit of pain. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you know, if anyone listening, we appreciate there's extremes in every circumstances because there's, um, I can't remember what it's called now, but I only discovered this year that there's a, a um, an addiction to, uh, there's a technical term for an addiction to exercise. Like and I and as a as a fitness professional that's been doing what I've been doing for so many years, um, I feel like I should know what that's called, but I yeah. can't I can't remember it. And I think I had I had barriers to even accepting that. Oh, you know, God, there's an addiction. There's a there's a term for it now. You know, because I think basically anything that you do that becomes uh, problematic, where you take it to the extreme, it, it then becomes an addiction, doesn't it? And um, I can't remember where I was going with this now. Um, orthorexia yeah. oh yeah that, that probably was not orthorexia yeah. or exercise addition may also yeah that sounds like it yeah um because I had yeah well basically well, <laughs> backtracking a bit when I heard, first heard about it straight away I was like oh here we go isn't this just another name that we're giving to somebody who is trying to be healthy yeah you know yeah. because uh, we we've talked about this before but I get fed up when I've had this years when I would be the person that says no on a Friday to cakes in the office or yeah. um, t- t- turns up to work with a healthy lunch and everyone's oh, like, yeah. oh, we, what you got in your lunch again? Something healthy, I suppose. You yeah, know? yeah, rabbit and food. Yeah. yeah. And then it will t- say, no, I don't want beers because I'm trying to be healthy. Oh, don't be so boring, you know. So true. Uh, go- going out and doing my runs over the downs or taking part in my events and people sort of, talking like I'm some sort of freak because I like to go out and hurt myself you know, <laughs> with this stuff. Yeah. So I've always, I've not liked it. I've always felt like I'm being isolated over making some healthy choices. Yeah. So then when I had this, this term that describes people that are addicted, I was like, oh, here we go. Mm. Um, but, you know, I appreciate there's extremes in every avenue, isn't there? Yeah. And um, an addiction is an addiction. It's, it's not good in any shape or form, is it? No, and addictions can come in all different ways. And I think it is very obvious when something's an addiction versus doing something for pleasure because you actually like it. And sometimes labelling addictions is quite helpful because when does it become 
you're under eating to you're anorexic and when does it become you're training a little bit too much to whatever the conditions called for actually you're overly obsessed with exercising and it's becoming mm. a problem we see it far too often you know I, I see it I've seen it in the gym before where people become obsessed with exercising and they choose exercise over food over family over work over everything mm. you know and then it can overtake their life and you develop a really bad relationship with it it's, it's a shame but it does happen so you do have to keep checking in with these people and like we've spoken about before because exercise does release a heck of a lot of dopamine sometimes you wonder like i was saying earlier are these people chasing exercise and fitness or are they chasing happiness temporary happiness no. Yeah, well, I guess actually, I suppose my new motivation of you know, I say new, I've been doing it for a long time, but of of going out and exercising and training because I know it's going to make that day better. Mm. In a way, I am chasing happiness because I'm ch- I'm chasing the mood boost. Yeah, from I'm I'm chasing I'm, I am chasing dopamine. Isn't it interesting though? Because and I want to get onto an ice bath in a second, just because we're kind of going. You want to get you want to get in an ice bath. Oh, I, you want to get on. I think we should get in the ice bath live <laughs> on the podcast. No, um. <laughs> Definitely going to chase some aesthetics before we do that. (laughs) (laughs) I was just thinking about how, what you just said there about how you are chasing happiness. And 100% I agree. So am I, like when I go to the gym, I know I'm doing it to feel better in in, in the moment. However, we've, you spoke to me recently about how dopamine increases depending on certain things that we do. So like if you drink a cup of coffee, your dopamine goes up by, is it 50%? Yeah. Yeah. And then if you exercise goes up by a couple hundred. Uh, it depends on, on what you're doing for how long and okay. everything else. Okay. But... There's there's lots of things that we could list off that make you temporary, temporarily happy, right? Mm. However, me and you are very conscious to not drink coffee five, six, seven, eight times a day, right? Yeah. We we have what? One? Two at the most? Uh, I've had two today and that's it. I won't have any more. Yeah. And I'll have one and I won't have any more. The minute I have two, I feel a bit giddy and stuff. So... Why is it then that me and you have barriers to our temporary happiness? Because we could both have a coffee now and feel a bit happier. Why are we not? <laughs> because I, I think, well, I'm very conscious there's a withdrawal. Yeah. You can have too much of a good thing. Yeah. You know, so if we had, oh, 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 and actually with caffeine too, there's problems with yeah. having too much caffeine long term. But I know that if you have a, if you keep, if you keep chasing that fake, um, buzz or rush yeah you know if you go up you've got to come down yeah, <laughs> that's the yeah, way it goes yeah, yeah, and definitely. that's just life you know yeah. if you keep chasing that and um, I mean this I think I told you about that book that I read called Dopamine Nation and um, she says the lady that wrote it and uh, I've forgotten her saying now, Lem, I want Lemka Lemka I, want to th- I think her name is but she um, she says in it that if you if you chase pain, and again, anyone listening who's like, you've got to be careful with how you use this information. Yeah. If you chase pain, um, then you'll get a period of euphoria after that. And so if I, if you go to like ice bath, for example, if you get in an ice bath, it's painful. It is not nice. You mm. feel like lots of little knives are stabbing you yeah. and it's not good. It's not good. But the great thing about it is you know that if it's temporary and yeah. you know, you're not stuck out in the middle of nowhere then you're going to be okay, you're going to be fine. So you have that kind of, that, that peace of mind knowing it's going to subside the moment you get out of this ice yeah. bath. And, and then as soon as you're out, because your, your dopamine levels are elevated, you now have that euphoric feeling, you get yeah. to benefit that, and you don't get the crash that you would have got if you'd just gone straight for the dopamine first, you know, yeah. through coffee and, you know, everything else, alcohol, etc. Yeah, um, that's it. Great example. Just to quickly finish on that then, because I found that really interesting. I think your listeners will find it interesting as well. I'll quickly share an experience I had recently, then I'd like to hear about yours. One of the, I'm, I'm, I'm one of these people who checks in on myself a lot. Like if I'm driving or when I wake up in the morning, like I check in, like how am I feeling? Mm. And if I'm not feeling good, okay, what did I do yesterday? Okay, I had a few drinks. All right, you know, or, um, you know, I haven't been as productive recently or actually it's been a couple of days since I went to the gym or whatever. And then if I am feeling good, okay, have I changed anything or am I just randomly feeling good today? And what I have realized is it's never normally random. There's a reason why we wake up feeling like we do occasionally. And one of the 
happiest, I, I guess, or maybe happiness is the wrong word, but sort of the most charged up I've felt for a long time was when I was doing daily um, sea swims. And this was end of October, early November. So it was, yeah, about over a month ago. And I was doing it daily. I was going in the sea. And it was one of those things I never really looked forward to. And when I took my clothes off initially to get in, it was so cold, it was bitter. The wind was, was harsh. And the, the sea was a, a different color. It was just colder. It just looked uninviting. But the moment I was in and swimming around, I took my breath away, dunked my head under, came out. I felt hot, like I felt warm. I didn't want to put my clothes back on because I felt at one with my environment. Mm. Like my body had completely adapted. And I'd walk home and I'd be, for lack of better words, buzzing off my tits. I was literally like skipping home with a basket of flowers. Like I felt <laughs> so good. Almost even better than ice baths because I've done ice baths as well. There's something about the sea. I don't know if the... the well, I guess you were moving as well. So you yeah. were getting the, the coldness plus exercise. Plus exercise, true. So it's like a double whammy. That was like a cocktail. Yeah, a cocktail, cocktail, yeah. And the, I think the sea, there's like the salt air, the salt on my body... Um, the, the element of danger as well because you're quite safe in an ice bath whereas the sea you know it's a bit choppy and the, yeah the way, you know so I feel like there was quite a lot hitting me and as I was doing it daily my body felt brilliant like I felt almost it sounds extreme but almost like a new person in some respect like I did feel a lot happier mm. and I'm not a, a sad person or anything but um I did feel a lot happier like I just wake up a bit more just feeling better and stronger and more enthusiastic for life um, and I was just wondering if you've been feeling like that, because I know you've been doing, am I right in saying regular ice baths or the occasional ice bath recently? Uh, I'd say probably more occasional. I only bought it last week. Okay. So only, yeah, I bought one on Amazon, uh, 59 <laughs> Yeah. And, um, and it's I, this little blow up tub. Yeah. 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 So you're sitting in it like you're inside like a, like an inflatable barrel. Yeah. And so you can't swim obviously or anything like that. You're just sitting in it. And I've just been sort of messing about with it. But so like backtracking before that, so where you and I are slightly different, I think we, we're starting to balance each other up, up out a bit on this, but yeah. where you and I have always been slightly different is you're much more listen to your gut, uh, mm. go with the flow, um, sort of spiritual. Yeah. You probably be more interested in native medicine. Yeah, 100%. Than sort of today's medicine, yeah, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I'm... And it, and it comes from, I mean, this was drummed into us. Uh, I'm about to say Masters again. Uh, <laughs> but this was really drummed into us in the Masters because the Masters is very much about being critical, which is kind of annoying because it's yeah. like a, it's not a terribly attractive trait in somebody to be overly critical. Yeah. But that's exactly what you're meant to do as a Master. So like yeah. The main take-home from Masters is critique everything. Don't take everything as gospel. As yeah. gospel. Yeah. And where that was drummed into me, I am... You know, I am very much like that, where show me the evidence. I need to see the evidence. Mm. And then someone shows me the evidence, and I'm critiquing the evidence. Yeah. I'm going, okay, how big's the sample size? Who was involved? You know, what are the control measures in place? How do we not know it's not placebo? And yeah. so I've always been like that with with the ice bath thing. You yeah. know, just because this personality comes out of nowhere years ago called Wim Hof, the ice man, he's breaking world records and telling everyone that's amazing if you get into an ice bath and that'll, you know, cure everything. Um... I'm st- I'm st- skeptical as you like, you know. I yeah. that that doesn't mean does it might stoke an interest, and even that's probably exaggerating. I, I just see someone yeah. like that come out of nowhere, and I'm like, yeah, whatever. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's that, my initial that, reaction. That is great, by the way, and it certainly rubbed off on me. I don't want to say that I was like, um, I guess, like ignorant to things before, but like, I would take it would take less convincing for me to believe certain things you know whereas spending a lot more time around yourself and also getting into science and looking into placebo control trials <laughs> you're about to go spending more time with you i've become uh, also a grumpy cynic yeah, i've become a, 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 grumpy, <laughs> a grumpy old git and uh, people are like it's a lovely day today isn't it george show me the evidence where's the evidence that it's a lovely day it might be a nice day for you but not for me thank you not for everyone <laughs> yeah not for yeah you, you're yeah. T- this is a sample size of one person george you, just you. Yeah, you. Can we get a hundred other people? A to, white, uh, entitled vote? millennial. <laughs> <laughs> what about everybody else? <laughs> it might not be a nice day for them. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> maybe not to that degree, but certainly, um, yeah, a lot more like skeptical and, and. It's not even skeptical, is it? It's just like, 
I need to know the truth of it. And I think that's why nutrition has bugged me for so like well over 10 years when I got into nutrition. I'm still into it today because I just, there's, you can't find the answers. <laughs> you can't find the bloody <laughs> it's answers. It's a bloody minefield, isn't it's it? Just, yeah. You, yeah, there's so much to it. But no, yeah. sorry, I interrupted. You carry on. Well, no, so I was so my instant reaction was like, yeah, it's probably just placebo because yeah. it, it seems to be the case with so many things. Is yeah. we can put everything down to placebo, and this is the ice bath. Yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, oh, and also actually, what, what I will just say is when I work, oh god, I'm about to name drop again, but when I worked at Brighton Hove Albion, so this was two thousand and this was before the Masters, wasn't it? It was before. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, did you know I've got a Masters? Yeah, yeah. So before your Masters, so before your Masters, you're working at Brighton Hove. But Albion. after my degree, yeah. I, I mean... <laughs> god, I might have to edit this bit. Um, I, I want was... to add in more Masters bits. Like yeah, well, adding some more qualifications. Yeah. Quickly get some more and add them on. Yeah. Um, now the uh, I was working for right now Albion Football Club. Yes, the first team. <laughs> um, <laughs> and one of my jobs was well, I had lots of jobs actually, but one of them <laughs> I remember Malcolm Stewart, the physio at the time, said to me, "John, what do you know about ice baths?" And uh, actually, at this point, I can't remember if I'd heard of Wim Hof or not, but um, I think I had. And uh, he said, "Can you research them, investigate? Because we we've been making the players do it, and actually, most of them." bloody hate it mm. so are we making them do something that that's, has no point doesn't work mm. and I read loads of stuff at the time so this was I think it was 2006 I want to say and um, I concluded that it probably is placebo from everything I've read and researched so, so with that in mind those players that believe in it and think it works, turn to crack on and keep yeah. doing it. Yeah. Those that hate it and don't see the point, don't make them do it. Mm. And that's my kind of take home from that. And that's what I went with. And um, I think, see, I think from a recovery point of view, the jury's still out. So this whole idea, back then, the whole idea I think was vasodilation, vasoconstriction. So if you, if you put somebody in a very cold environment, then you'll get vasoconstriction, so the, the blood vessels will um, constrict, yeah. restricting blood flow. Because obviously, when we are cold, we need to preserve our internal organs, so we restrict the blood flow to our extremities, yeah. so things have to constrict to do that. So that whole idea of doing that, then getting into a warm environment, dilating the blood flow, flow the, uh, sorry, dilating the blood vessels, increasing the blood flow, you get this restriction, dilation, restriction, dilation. The idea was it improves recovery because it helps to flush out toxins and everything else. Now, I think the jury's still out on that. Mm. I might be wrong, but I, I, think it, I don't think it's that conclusive. I think that what it's been shown to do is not necessarily prevent or treat something that's currently there, but it's to prevent things from the future in regards to like your immunity because it, in, it, it has been proven to it increase the amount of white blood cells within your body. And then the white blood cells are the ones that are responsible for basically running an efficient immune system. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, so, I don't, I don't, so I don't know. Like, I'll take your word for, for that one. Because I've, I've, I've not read the studies. I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't yeah. know. Yeah. Um, I don't know that. I mean, that'd be wonderful if that is the case. And people talk about Wim Hof a lot, like he's never been poorly, he's never been ill. Yeah. And again, that's where the scientist he goes, this, this is one dude. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. It, it could be, it could be, it could be something else he's doing in his life. It could be the fact that he's just a genetic freak or yeah. whatever. Like we just don't know. But yeah. Um, but what I will say is, when I first tried, the first time I, I t- first time I tried the cold water thing, would have been going to like spas with mm-hmm. Samantha, and. Um, just, you know, I, I can't relax much. I'd get bored. So I'd just go and sort of tinker about with what stuff they have, you know. Go, oh, look, there's a hot tub. Go in there for a bit. Get out of there. Go in the sauna. Go in there. Then I'll be like, oh, what's this over here? There's a cold water tub or there's um there's a cold shower. And I'll try these things. <laughs> and I remember, like, doing this freezing cold shower and be like, oh, my God, that's freezing. Coming out and then some, uh, telling Samantha about it and saying, I'm going to go back and have another go. Mm. And she'd go, why? And I, I, I don't know. I just want to go back and have a go. Yeah. I'd go back, have another go, come back over, do you want to go, oh, yeah, that's freezing, that is. I'm going to have another go. Yeah. <laughs> do you know yeah. why you have another go? <laughs> I'm not, I don't really know why. I just am. 
And what I realised is I was getting a buzz from it. Yeah. So that's why I kept going back and having another go. And I do this when we go to these spas. I just I, I sniff out the ice cold water thing and like give it a go. So I seem to get this buzz from it. So that what I, I don't see how that's placebo because I thought it was all bollocks. Yeah, right. <laughs> so uh, the fact that I'm getting something from it means I am obviously getting something from it. Well, I remember when we were at David Lloyd and we were daring each other to go in the cold shower. Do you remember that? I do remember that. Yeah, because <laughs> they have a they have like it's a blue button, isn't it? Yeah. You press it and it. And I remember actually enjoying it, thinking it was nice. Like not the initial hit of the cold water, but a few seconds in, it started feeling feeling good. Yeah, it's it's a, it's a strange feeling, but the the other I mean I guess the other argument with it is like different ailments that you have in your body they need a certain certain conditions to thrive mm. and like you know we've talked before they talk about fasting is like if you've got viruses or a certain you know even a certain bacteria i guess that needs nutrients to survive will then starve it you know mm, yeah and maybe it will die and that's what fasting can do and maybe extreme cold can also yeah, kill kill something. I don't know. I don't know. But I think that's the idea, isn't it? Yeah. And um, and I don't I, think that's that's a far fetched idea. I don't think that's like woo woo stuff. I think it's quite plausible that if you are in the cold environment more often than not, because that's not actually good for your immune system. How many times do you hear you go outside and it's cold, and then the next day you have a cold? You know, that's probably why it's even called a cold. Yeah. I'm just guessing. No, it makes sense. But it would make sense if you were in that environment a lot that your body is going to be like, shit, we need to actually do something about this and improve our immunity. Hence why it has been apparently shown and proven and studied extensively on what happens to the immune system when you're in the cold and it improves. Maybe that's a survival mechanism in your body kicking in that actually we're more vulnerable out here, so we need to improve what's going on internally. Yeah, yeah like the Scandinavian countries have been doing that sort of thing, well, for forever. And they like, you know, Norwegians getting into smashing a hole in the ice and well, yeah. getting in. And, and their skin is, is thicker and more, you know, more dense because it's just harsher out there. Their skin adapts. It's like anything, you go to a warmer, warmer country your skin ad- adapts straight away like it becomes darker in colour, right? That, mm. That's protection. Like, people think, oh, it's great, we're getting a tan, but that's actually your body protecting itself. It's really cool. Mm. But that's something you can visually see with your eyes. But how many things are happening internally that we're not actually aware of depending on where we're at with our climate? And then you can go right down the rabbit hole and talk about, like you were saying, you know, doing intermittent fasting, doing some some meditation practices, you know, walking barefoot, like... What's that doing? Maybe nothing. Maybe something. Yeah, well, I, th- I personally, my belief on actually, at the very least, what any of these things are doing are getting you comfortable with being uncomfortable. Yeah. And largely, that has been forgotten, hasn't it? So when people do experience a bit of com- discomfort, mm. they freak out. Yeah. Like, you all know this from training clients. One of the first things that clients adapt to is not, it's not, it's, it's not physiologically, it's mentally. They get used to their subjective tolerance to discomfort gets better yeah. they they basically experience some discomfort and they go oh my god and they freak out and then they realize they didn't die yeah and actually they see you as the trainer reassuring them going this is what you're meant to feel this is all good this mm. this is where the good shit comes you know yeah. this is where you're going to get adaptation you get your gains now yeah. and then they start to get this association between discomfort and progress and evolving and growing yeah, and, yeah. and I think by and that a training certainly done that for me but then if you do that with cold water immersion you do that with mindfulness you're practicing on a regular basis how to tolerate discomfort mm. so it doesn't feel out of the ordinary when you then get discomfort oh like, no exactly exactly yeah, yeah. like like when I was doing the, the cold water swims every day there wasn't one morning where I'd wake up and I'd be like, oh, and grab the dressing gown and the slippers and go down with a snotty nose and get a nice warm tea inside me. I would just stroll down in my boxers, you know, <laughs> open the back door, let the dog out and the wind would hit me and I just felt fine because yeah. that cold was incomparable to the cold I experienced out in the sea, mm. worlds apart. So it will build you as a person. It will make you stronger. 
you know, and more to, and even when I was talking about walking barefoot and stuff, I love doing that. It's one of my, my big things. And again, a bit like you when uh, earlier you were talking about how people, oh, you know, what are you eating today? Are oh, you being healthy again? People do it with me when I'm outdoors. I'm like, do you mind if I just take my shoes off for a bit and have a little walk around? They're like, what? Who is this? <laughs> You're like weirdo, yeah. But I used to really struggle with thorns in the feet. I used to really struggle with that and and just you know pain on the feet. But my feet are so much stronger now. And it's amazing what the body does. Like you, you get these thorns in your feet that you can't pull out, mm. like even, even with um, tweezers or anything, they're just in there. And then after a few few days, they're just gone and the yeah. body breaks them up and just eliminates them through the skin. It's incredible. And it's amazing how strong your feet get. And then the next time you go out, you're, step, you're stepping on the same, same thorns and twigs and stones and stuff. And it's just less painful. And I notice it every summer when I go on the beach and you know when you're walking on the pebbles and you start walking like yeah. really funny because it's so painful I'm getting less and less of that each year yeah. because my feet are just getting stronger probably so. getting less requests to do any foot modelling as well that, that as well yeah, yeah. That, that's come up funny, funny enough you mentioned that yeah. <laughs> unless it's like the front cover of the Gruffalo the, the, yeah the Gruffalo or yeah the, the Grinch Christmas special <laughs> um, but no there's definitely something in this um, practising mm. being comfortable with being uncomfortable. We we used mm. to watch, so like, well, not so we used to, but we, we quite like dramas, like movies and series that are like medieval. Yeah. So I really, we really loved Game of Thrones. We love The Last Kingdom, yeah, uh, yeah, Vikings. Yeah. We love all that stuff. And um, we're always saying they must have been hardier back then, just generally hardier people. Like even the rich, because mm. the, even the rich people that lived in castles, still it was still bloody freezing. Everywhere, yeah. Because they've got these fires everywhere. But we know from having, we had a, like an open fire in the house, 90% of that heat goes up the chimney. Yeah. So you're only you're getting very little of that heat around the room unless you have a wood burner. And even then, you know, it's, it's still not the most efficient way of heating a home. Yeah. So castles would have been freezing but they're not all walking around constantly in tons of clothing, and and they just would have been hardier. So, well, they they a lot of them were farmers, right? In the medieval era, how many exercises have been named after farmers? <laughs> yeah. Farmers walk, farmers carry, you know, yeah. all of these different things. Yeah, they're talking about farm boy strength, aren't they? Like, farm boy strength and farm boy immunity. It's another one. They always have very good immune systems if you work on a farm because you're around bacteria all the time. And it's one thing yeah. to wash your hands, which is definitely important. We should all be washing our hands. And as you know... Being too sterile. Being too sterile. Yeah, absolutely. That can actually be detrimental for your immune system because like anything else in life, if you're not... If you don't experience something, your body's not ready for it. They say that about... So, you know, if um, uh, if if a child is born by cesarean... So, Jaden was born by cesarean. Yeah. And... Um, because they, if they go down the the, the, the regular birth canal, they, yeah, they, there's some you're spot on. There's some bacteria, there is. basically. No, there's there's trillions. Yeah, good bacteria, yeah. but if they via cesarean, they miss out on that bacteria. So obviously, a child can still be healthy via cesarean. Mm -hmm. Jaden's healthy, but there are some bacteria that they're missing out on, which does mean that there's other, uh, I suppose, risks or there's other th things they might suffer with. At a young age because they didn't get that bacteria they've done big studies on this i'll send you some because i've looked into it heavily this it's very very interesting the people who yeah are born through cesarean have weaker immune systems than those who are born the conventional way that has been like there's been huge studies on this. it's more like to get like autoimmune stuff aren't they like i think i think oh, like even like asthma and yeah. uh, allergies like, ac eczema yeah and... but also just general illness and a classic example, and again, you know, whatever, this is, we can't use this as evidence as such, but it's a fun little story. I was born the conventional way. My sister was born cesarean. My sister, bless her heart, is always ill. Always. Like, it, it, she, I, I, I can't even tell you how often. She's more ill than she's not. But me, um, touch wood, of course, you know, I ne hardly ever get sick. You know, recently I had that little, that, that weird virusy thing for two days. That's the first time I've been sick for over 10 years, you know, mm. a long, long time. So I never get ill, but she always does. Now, I'm not necessarily saying it's evidence for that as such, because I'm, I'm also very healthy and I know my sister likes to have a drink occasionally and stuff. So there's, there's lots of things going on, but um, it is very interesting. You're right, when you do 
when you are born the conventional way, you are uh, quite literally, they call it a baby shower, you are showered with good bacteria that literally builds your immune system there and then. Mm. And all that, that white liquid paste that's over the baby should be rubbed into the baby when they're born. We actually, in well, in the West, um, uh, we, we wipe that off with a towel, but you're actually supposed to rub that into the baby's skin and that helps to form the immune system. Blimey, yeah. yeah. Oh, no, there's, um, there's data that shows that children that grow up in households that have lots of pets have stronger immune systems than those yeah. that don't have pets. And uh, children that grow up on farms are supposed to be the most yeah, <laughs> the most are. robust immune systems you can get. Yeah, they're just surrounded in animals and yeah. dirt and filth and what have you. So yeah, it's interesting. Oh, and, he, and even um, only ch- only if you're an only child, um, you're more likely to think a weaker immune system because you haven't got the germs off your siblings. So yeah, yeah it's interesting, isn't it? All that it really is, which yeah. does make me kind of think that with everything that we're pursuing in life you know all this technology for all the good everything's doing we just we're just we're still become, becoming weaker aren't we we're yeah. coming weaker i don't this isn't a dig at uh, anyone because i know I, I can struggle with some of this myself self but becoming weaker probably mentally because we're we're, we're not used to discomfort mm. and then we're also having to struggle with multiple amounts of information that are coming at us left right and center advertising is getting more and more aggressive you know pinpointing to everybody exactly how their life can be, be, be could be better if only yeah. they they purchase this next thing or whatever so we're we everything a better life has always been showcased to us and we know one thing about humans we know that comparisons matter we mm. we we could have the dream life until someone shows us something that looks better yeah. and then all of a sudden we're we're not content with the life we've got so and that's it's so hard isn't it because we're all sort of chasing the same things being content and happy, which are definitely two different things, but you don't know what you want sometimes until, like you say, you've got that contrast because I totally agree with everything you say there, that we are becoming weaker and potentially more miserable and mental health is through the roof at the moment in terms of the negative effect it's having on people. Um, but wouldn't it be interesting to go back to that med- medieval period where they were working every day, they were outdoors, they were active, but were they happy? Like, can you imagine if we did that for one day, like hacking away at the field all day, every day, for what, like a few pence, you know, a, a half a slice of pie? Well, we couldn't go back, could we? We couldn't. No, no it'd be it, awful. It, yeah. People... I mean, uh, what? So, like, go back to think. Think about about a king back in I don't know, you know, ten sixty six, first day of the pox and mad. Battle of Hastings. What a good year. Um, <laughs> <laughs> allegedly. Yeah, allegedly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so 1066, imagine going back then, our life right now, and we're not kings, yeah. our life yeah. right now would be better than a king back then, yep. you know, royalty back it's then. It's a very good comparison. Much better. Yeah. So, yeah, very good comparison, yeah, we are, we are living a better life than royalty was, even less than that, let's, let's take it back to like the bloody, I don't know, 15, 1600s. That but wasn't less child, less child mortality. Yeah, like you're more likely to survive everything now. <laughs> yeah. because of medication and yeah. surgeries and all that sort of stuff. So that is phenomenal. And the communication, yeah. being able to communicate with some people, is so much easier. Um, so it's a double edged sword, isn't it? The way I almost see it is, it's like humans are going in the right direction, but that direction is a giant thorn bush. It's like we're gonna get there. But it's going to be painful and we're going to experience so many hiccups and problems along the way. I think we're so intelligent that we're trying to do it all now. Yeah. We want to do it in 10 years. We want to do it in 20 years. But because of that, we're sacrificing a lot of human health and happiness along the way. You know what I mean? Like, I think that, 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 that that's, a, that's where there is something in the gratitude thing, isn't it? Mm. You do have to stop. Like we, 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 You can look at any situation and see how it could be better and what problems we could solve and and some of that is fun like yeah. it's fun troubleshooting sometimes yeah. you know fixing things and making things better improving things that is that can be very fun but you do also have to stop and go this is pretty bloody good you know and can make comparisons to people that are less fortunate and go oh do you know what i'm i'm doing all right i'm doing all right uh, yeah. yeah, I'm sure we could fix that and the, this, that and the other. But right now, things are pretty good. And that that is important. And if you're not there, if you can't look at anything and look, 
in your life and go, well, you know, there's nothing about my life I like. That's a different story. You yeah. definitely need to yeah. you need to get on that. You need to work something out there. But And I'm very big on the whole, like, you know, when everyone says my life could be better, but you, you have to follow that up by saying it can also be worse. Yeah, you know? that's so important, yeah. You're, you're, whatever position you're in, and I appreciate some are more extreme than others, but the average person in this country, like, it could still be worse. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, I love, um, you know, like, you know, they talk about rag scoring, which is like red, amber, green. Mm. I've got this habit of doing it in my head for everything, like, even to the point where Samantha would be like, How's your day been? I'd be like, mm, Amber, it's been an amber day. <laughs> and she's like, John, I think you need to go for a run. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every day, go yeah. for a run, go for a run. And then it'll be a green light. Yeah. Go for a run. Yeah. Um, but uh, I think sometimes people have that with their careers, like, yeah. like if you're. If your if your career is red, so mm-hmm. you're doing a job that you hate, yeah. so yeah, we're, we're, we're rag scoring it. It's red. Then there's actually a shitload of motivation there to 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 chase after something pretty spectacular, yeah. Because you hate where you are and you want to get out of that, and that's that's a misery is strong motivation. But there's a lot of people that are ambers, yeah. And like they're doing stuff. The most, yeah, so probably most, most. And it might be that that's fine. That's nothing wrong with that. That's all right. Yeah. But it could be green. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> and I think that's where. <laughs> that's probably where a lot of people struggle. Yeah. Is that they're just not quite unhappy enough <laughs> to do anything about their so current true. circumstance. And that's going to be the same with, with fitness. So think yeah. about somebody that. They often say there was this turning point where you know, they realised that they were 25 stone and some cutting comment was made by somebody once where they were like, holy shit, you know, I need to make some changes. And then they turn it around. Yeah. But whilst they were like, so this is someone that's obese, but when they're overweight, they're not motivated enough to do anything about it. They have to wait until they become obese before they do something about it. It's funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Not quite sure where I was going with all that. No, it's good because it's almost like, I've always thought that you have to, let's use your thing about the the traffic lights, you have to taste the other colours before you can really know what you want. So like if you've been living in amber your whole life, let's just relate it to fitness. So like um, if you've just have had like a normal body your whole life, what you perceive to be normal, you know, you're not healthy, you're not unhealthy. Well, it could be worse, could be better. Could be worse, could be better, exactly. Well, if you get to a worse place and you suddenly become morbidly obese or anorexic or whatever it is, you go to an extreme and you become in the red zone, then you want to get back to amber. Like, you you, you, you end up, that's the goal. And mm. amber is always going to be better than red. But if you get to green, like you were in your boxing days, like me when I heavily focus on calisthenics, and you look your best, you feel your best, You've had that taste of green. Going back to amber isn't very fun. Uh, yeah, um, <laughs> you know? amber becomes the new red. <laughs> it does, yeah. Amber's the new That's red. That's true. And That's so true. And that must be the same with business. Yeah. Oh, exa- Oh, you can relate it to anything, really. Like if you're, uh, if you're, well, Warren Buffett. If he, be- oh, yeah, if he yeah, became yeah. a millionaire, yeah, that'd be red. Right, exactly. Because he's a billionaire. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's all relative, isn't it? Rag scoring is relative. Interesting, it George. Is. Interesting. God, yeah, that was... That's I don't know. Cool. Yeah. I've just realised we haven't... I haven't got... <laughs> no, the, yeah, so... Uh, but So, <laughs> for anyone listening... For any, yeah. uh, I actually wrote down five questions I was going to ask George. Not asked him any of those. Um, do so, we... let's do that in another episode. Yeah. Let's do that in another say, episode. Yeah. So, just to summarise some of the stuff we've been talking about then... Um, <laughs> How do we do that? All right, let me try. So, first thing to remember is um, don't don't beat yourself up if you're not training as much as you feel like you need to be training and doing all of this. You've got to find out what you like doing in the fitness world, whether you're a fitness enthusiast or you want to be a fitness professional. And we've spoken about this before where it's absolutely fine if you've just got an interest in fitness and you don't want to pursue it and become a professional. But then there's a lot of people out there who love fitness so much that they feel like I could get paid for this. And for those people listening, they should certainly get qualified and and get it, get it done. That's the world they want to live in. That's the environment. That's what they want to spend their time reading, watching, talking about. Then yeah, then do it. it? Yeah, definitely. Um, Definitely. If you find a time machine, 
don't go back to 1066. <laughs> no, that was an awful time. <laughs> that was a really bad time, me and John can confirm. Uh, what else did we talk about? Oh, we spoke about um, chasing temporary happiness, such as ice baths and things, but also be aware that you don't want to become too overly reliant on that because it is temporary happiness. It's kind of fake, isn't it? It's not... Yeah, oh yeah, that's a good point. You're right. Yeah, we're so we're, we're sort of chasing. We're talking about chasing buzzes, really, aren't we? Yeah. yeah, we're doing these things to get buzzes, which is fine. But then, you, you know, if you, if if uh, around that your life is a mess, um, you're always going to be going back to the life you didn't want. So you need to do something about that for sure. So it's, yeah, it's playing the long game, isn't it? With health, mm. with health, with fitness, with relationships, yeah, with a career. You're always playing the long game, making sure that you're sowing the right seeds and. Um, you know, all these good decisions you're making, your future self will benefit from the compound interest of all those good decisions. Um, but every now and then, if you want a little quick buzz, get an ice bath. Yeah, like on. I did, or go for a nine. run. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we, we're not at that point yet where you can have a sponsor and be like, "Today's sponsor is Ice Bath Limited." You yeah, can get yours for twenty percent off with the code Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, brilliant, Jonathan. Yeah, yeah, uh, That's cool. Pretty- Pretty much it. Yeah, it? I don't know. That was a waffly one today, wasn't that it? Was but, a bit of a look, if anyone uh, got this far, then congratulations. Um, yeah. <laughs> you can endure some discomfort. Yeah, 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 definitely. <laughs> or, might... Already buying the ice to put in their bathtub tonight. Oh, and by the way, if anyone does want to do an ice bath, just quick, because we have spoken about that quite heavily, you can buy what John's got, or you, if you've got a bath, fill it up with cold water and put a massive bag of ice in it, or maybe two bags of ice sit in it for no longer than sort of five minutes and you'll feel really good afterwards and i know a friend of ours does it in the wheelie bin <laughs> she clears out a wheelie wheelie bin fills it up with water oh george this is really <laughs> annoying i've just spent 60 quid on one on amazon it's i didn't even think idea, about that yeah i actually go. have got oh man that's really annoying well you've got a bath and a wheelie bin so. i've got both well i tell you what i'll put i'll put um samantha can go in there she yeah, she's not interested at all by the way um, no, I don't Jaden is Jaden's absolutely loving it so I'll put oh, Jaden yeah. in the uh, ice bath and I'll get in the wheelie bin <laughs> yeah you can get in the wheelie <laughs> right brilliant cheers cheers George no worries mate thanks for having me on thanks for listening everyone yeah well I'll look we'll get you on next week as well and then uh, yeah, we'll I can actually ask you the questions I meant to ask you <laughs> <laughs> right have a good day everyone bye everyone now if you enjoyed today's episode something you can do for me is subscribe to my show And if you know anyone else that might be interested in this content, then please share it with them too. You can also head over to our socials and follow us on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and YouTube. But if you're ready to take that next step, visit our website, www.stormfitnessacademy.co.uk. Fill out a contact form, that'll come straight to me. I will contact you shortly afterwards, and I look forward to speaking to you then.